Hey, I'm Jonathan with the BC Builder, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to calculate and build a simple set of stairs, from the math behind the rise and the run, all the way to putting the pieces together on site. This isn't just theory, this is what I actually do on real projects. So if you've ever been unsure about how to lay out stairs properly, or you just want to build with confidence, you're in the right place. Let's get into it. Okay, let's do the math to figure out our unit rise. That is going to tell us how high each step is going to be. So let's just say we have a total rise here of 58 inches. And we're looking for a desired rise of around 7 inches. What we're going to do is we're going to do 58 inches divided by 7. And we're going to get 8.29. Okay, so that's important. So we, does that, we divided our total rise, which is the total height we need, by approximately how high we want each step to be. So that tells us that we're gonna have approximately, or we're gonna have 8.29 steps, but we know we can't have 0.29 of a step. So we need to round that down to a full number. So we're gonna have eight rises. So now that we know that we're gonna have eight steps up, what we can do is we can go 58 divided by eight, and we're gonna get 7.25. And that is our unit rise. Okay, so now that we found out our total rise, now we can find out our total run. So the total run is a lot easier unless you're constrained or you're, you're limited by how far out you can go. You really just want to make the stairs comfortable. So the golden rule that I was taught was you want your unit rise and unit run when you add them together to land in between 17 to 18 inches and that'll make for a comfortable step so if we have a unit rise of 7.25 that means you know we're going to want about a 10 to 10 and a half inch run so let's just say we have a 10.25 unit run and this will be unit rise So now all we have to do, and it's really easy now that it's drawn out here, is we just have to calculate how many treads or how many unit runs are going to be in this stringer. So if we just count it, you know, we have our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rises that we figured out before. Now we just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's very common that you'll have one less tread than your riser. But okay, so the last thing we need to consider is our adjustments. So basically what an adjustment is, is basically once we start adding treads on, so say we're gonna add an inch and a half tread on, we're gonna add inch and a half tread on everything. And basically this distance, because we raised it on this one and this one and this one, they're all gonna stay the same. The problem is, is we're not gonna put a tread on the bottom. So you have to account for whatever thickness your tread is gonna be, you need to be able to remove that off your stringer first. Okay, so this rusty looking L is called a framing square. It is actually a very important tool in uh, laying out your stringers, um, but basically if you don't know how to use it, uh, it's not gonna be very helpful to you. So basically, as you can see, I've marked out some black points here, okay? The important thing to understand is that basically we, the two measurements we use on these are our unit rise and our unit run. It's hard to see the lettering on this because it's all um, rusty and old, but just you can see here, okay, we're at seven and a quarter, which is our unit rise. And on this side, we're at 10 and a quarter, which is our unit run, okay? The important part is that you're using the same side, okay? If I decided to use this side and then this side, that would not work. You have to use this side or this side, or you can also use inside as long as you use the inside on that side. Doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you know you're using the same ones. There are some cool um, screw on knobs, which are called stair gauges, which you can use, clip on, tighten, and then you always know that you're in the right spot. So why don't we take this out to the stringer and I'll show you how to lay it out. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use the top side, I like using the top side better. 
is I'm gonna line those two points up on the edge of the board, right there. Okay, and a lot of times I'll start on the end, which we're just showing you guys. We'll show, we'll show you in the middle here. So I'm lined up right there at that point, there at that point. Now I can draw my triangle. Do so what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lock onto that same point. Make sure we're tied in right there. This is important that you're being accurate with this stuff. Okay, that's where the stair gauges come in handy if you're not confident in your accuracy. And that goes on both sides. And you can just keep going up and down till you have enough rises and runs or risers and treads or steps or whatever you want to call it okay so now you can see you're actually going to be removing these and you're going to be left with a stair stringer most of the times i always or I always cut my stair stringers out of two by twelves because as you can see, this is a two by 10 and the throat distance, which is what that's called is too short. Uh, there is a code for how big this is and you know, check with your building authorities um, and your building codes. There is also building codes for rises and runs. I'm not going to tell you what the codes are because that changes for every municipality and state and province or wherever you are. So. So now that we're finally done all the math and the layout, we can finally get to cutting our stringers. This is where we have to be very careful about not overcutting because then we just basically weaken the stringer. So you'll see what I'm doing is I'll cut all the way to the line, just touching each other. And then I'll come back with a handsaw, Japanese saw, whatever you want to use. And uh, just trim it up so that you have no overcuts, basically, so you're not ruining the structural integrity of that stringer. Then once you have all your stringers done, we'll put some glue on the back and we'll attach the hanger board that we use to hang it. Um, and then yeah, throw some treads on and you got a set of stairs.